Today we're testing a four millimeter ball nose in hardened H13 material to determine what's the fastest feed rate and uh, chip load that we can go with that will give us reasonable tool life. Not pushing it enough that we're going to break the tool, but that we're not going slow enough that it's not cost efficient. My name's Doug Knoxel. I'm the owner of SureCut Machine Technology. I had the luxury of having many years of experimenting with cutters and tooling and machinery and software. I found that there are many, many different variables, all of which play into getting your most productivity from your tooling. If I get a job to cut multiple cavities, I'll spend more time in the beginning of the job testing tooling to determine how I can get the best unattended, guaranteed tool life. Well, basically what we did was we had ran it at about 100 inches a minute feed rate, and we've just upped it to 150 inches a minute, and now we're gonna observe how much more wear we've got after the uh, increase in feed rate and see if we have any kind of chipping on, on the cutting edge. The most important thing is to catch the tool where you can see some type of wear. It's a good idea to observe the cutting edge early in the cut. In the first 10 or 15 minutes, you can get a lot of information, whether it be a little bit of tool wear on the cutting edge or whether it's chipping. Both are indications as to how to adjust your feeds and speeds. Little to no wear again, so we've increased the feed rate double. Uh, so now we're going to try and go a little bit faster still, possibly look at increasing the depth of cut and going back to where we were in the beginning. If you see chipping on the cutting edge, even the small amounts early in the cut, it can be an indication of too fast a feed rate. If the chipping is occurring at the highest contact point of the cutter, then that's when you need to reduce your depth of cut. We've now cut two slots. We have over two hours of machining with this one tool. We're not seeing any significant wear. We can take a bigger depth of cut, a bigger chip load, and still have the 200 inch a minute feed rate. The reason we're holding at 200 inches a minute is typically in three-dimensional geometry, getting over 200 inches a minute of constant feed is rare unless you're on large parts. Finding the wear on a cutting edge is less obvious than the chipping, but still gives a lot of information about what's happening to the tool. If you don't feed the cutter fast enough and your RPM is high enough, you will get premature wear on the cutting edge because of rubbing. Again, ultimately, every machine is going to be a little bit different and every application is going to be a little bit different. Just the idea that without looking at it, um, you'll, you'll gain nothing. So by making this database and putting this information in, whether you do it just on paper and in a file, or whether you actually take that and take it all the way through to your CAM system and put it right into your tool database, all of that is gonna be allow not just one person within your company, but everyone within your company to have access to that information and to be able to use whenever you come across that material. If you come across a, a, a different type of material but has similar characteristics, at least you have a starting point with some documentation of how your machine handled that type of cutting. Everything changes, the tool geometry changes, the coatings change, and the materials and the type of work that you do change. But monitoring tool life and trying to get the most out of your cutters is the only way to be profitable.